want you to know that I win. Is that anyone show? No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. One more time. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. The weapon is, I want you to know that I win. Help me say, no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. Somebody proclaim it in your life. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. the best glory oh help me say I win Christ, he will 
worked it out. I said the fight of my life with no way out. But Jesus Christ, he worked it out. Oh, the fight of my life with no way out. But Jesus Christ, he worked it out. Oh, the fight of my life with no way out. But Jesus Christ, he worked it out. I say, he worked it. He worked it out. He worked it. Yes, he did. He worked it. Yes, he did. He worked it. Yes, he did. He worked it. 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 Already win the battle for you. Here we go, say he worked it. Yes, he did. He worked it out. He worked it. He worked it. Yes, he did. He worked it. Yes, he did. He worked it out. He worked it. Already done. He worked it. It's already done. He worked it. Yes, he did. He worked it. He worked it out. He worked. He worked. He worked it out. He worked it out. Job. How many remember the story of Job? See, in one day, his fam- he lost his family, he lost his land, he lost his, his possessions. But you want to know how he responded. When, it, when the going got tough, it, the Bible says that he fell to his knees, he ripped his clothes, and he began to worship the Almighty God. And I believe that he did that because he knew that he might not be able to see his answer, but he knew that his answer was on the way, that God was already providing that which he could not see. So I'm going to tell you right now, can you begin to thank God in advance for the things that you cannot see? Somebody give God a shout. Someone give God a dance. Somebody give God all you can. Come on. Right now, 
God in this place. I said, how many know that you serve a mighty God in this place? Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't deserve to be right here right now. If it had not been for his love, if it had not been for his grace, who knows where I would be? Oh, I deserve to be on drugs somewhere. I deserve to be insane. I deserve to be somewhere with my mind lost, but because of his grace, he kept me he kept me from that accident. He kept me from situations that were never meant for my life. Hallelujah. Oh, it's easy to thank God sometimes for the things that we've already seen him do. But can somebody just begin to thank God for the things that he has kept you from? I said from the sickness that he never allowed to enter your life. From the frustration that he never allowed to enter your life. From the depression that never entered your life. Hallelujah. Somebody just thank God in this place. I said thank God in this place. Oh, church, can we sing this together? It very simply says, where would I be? Come on, I know you know this one. Is anyone glad? I say I'm glad. Oh, you see, through eyes of love, a hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace. Help me out right there. Say, where would I? Lord, you only know. You only know. And I'm so glad.
you go. You can count on him to be your best friend. You can count on him to be your love. You can count on him to be your king. Oh, we love you in this place. Help me say amazing grace. It was so beautiful. Such a sweet there seen where would I be oh Lord you only know oh yes you do Lord you saw me through eyes of love you saw what I was gonna be one day you didn't see me in my mess oh you didn't see me in my mess Lord but you saw me as your child Lord I know I was a Oh yes and it looked like But I gotta thank you Lord Sing it one last time say Yes Lord we thank you Come on someone give God a joyful noise in this place he found you in your sickness come on can you just give God one more round of applause right there where you're at how many know that you serve a mighty king I said that you serve a mighty God that is worthy of all the worship all the glory that we can give somebody just lift your hands right there give God some glory in this place oh we thank you Lord we love you hallelujah hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. A few quick announcements. We want to make sure everyone knows that we got a children's festival coming up October 24th, Saturday, 4 to 7 p.m. It's a free event for all families. If you want to donate, please see Sister Renee Via. Amen. Sister Renee Via back there in the left corner if you, if you want more information. Also, we have a men's rally. Friday, October 16th. Do we have any men in the house tonight? Do we got any men that are excited about that? Men's Rally, 7 p.m., October 16th, here at Family Life Center with a special guest speaker. And lastly, where are my youth at? Do we have any youth in the place today? Amen. Our youth will be having a youth social. Amen. October 31st. The time will be 5 to 8 p.m. here at FLC. If you need more information, please contact your youth leaders. Amen. We are. Who's excited for what God's doing in this place? Who's excited for what God's going to continue to do in this place? At this time, we'd like to turn the remainder of this service over to our pastor, Pastor Arthur Aldiaz. Let's give the Lord a great round of applause right there where we're at. It's good. It's awesome to be here. Amen. It's awesome to be here with you. Amen. God's people. Because you're the one that beautifies this place. You're the one that makes it beautiful. You're the one that makes it, that adorns this place. Amen. It isn't anything else other than God's people. Praise the name of the Lord. And of course, the Lord. And we just give God all the honor and the glory. Can somebody say amen? We have some activities coming up here this month. And we encourage everyone to ensure that you participate. Can somebody say amen? The ladies have had their activity and it was a success and they got blessed. Amen, ladies? Praise the Lord. And if you're a man, participate in the men's event. Amen. Young men too. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Youth and, and young adult men, you're, you're welcome to join also. Pastor Joel Buxton, amen, from the San Diego area. He'll be joining us. Amen. Coming to bringing us the word of the Lord for the men's 
the men's event. Praise the name of the Lord. Then you know on the 24th, the children are going to have their, their uh, event. The 31st, the youth are going to have their event, and the children will have theirs on the 24th. God bless you, church. And then turn to your neighbor and just wave, wave at them. Tell them, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't it good? Because God is here. And because the Lord is in this place, amen. Everything has to change. Can somebody say amen? I didn't come to remain the same. I've come to change. And his presence, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It requires that everything, amen, that comes into the presence of the Lord, amen, changes. The atmosphere changes. The lives of men and women change because God is here. Amen. Amen. His presence, there is fullness of joy, and His right hand, pleasures
Jesus, hallelujah. Help me, Jesus, give you the glory and the honor all the time. Can somebody say amen? What a blessing it is. And you know, I want to just confess to you something real quick. During all this uh, shutdown where we weren't coming together as a church and we couldn't sing, and it's like all that business. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My voice started to just kind of not do too good. Amen. I'm serious. And you know why? Because I wasn't praising him as, as often as, I was, as, as I'm used to. I, I can't, so I can't, I can't be quiet. I got, I got to sing. God gave me this voice. I'm going to sing. I'm going to get, hallelujah. I'm going to, I'm going to use it for his honor and glory. Because if you don't, do, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And I experienced that. And I told him, Lord, I don't want to lose this. I enjoy worshiping you and forgive me for not worshiping you as much as I'm supposed to. Somebody say amen. Open with me your Bibles, amen, here this evening to St. John chapter 10, verses 22 and 23. Gospel according to St. John, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We don't have no monitors for you to read over here on the sides, so you got to bring a Bible, amen, so you can read it for yourself and you're not, you're not just taking my word that I'm reading. Amen. What I say I am. Praise the Lord. But just to ensure that keep me proper. Amen. Gospel according to St. John chapter 10 verse 22 and 23 reads as follows. And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. Verse 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. We're in a porch here this evening. Amen. Here, on, on, Right here in this little tabernacle in the wilderness in the back parking lot praise the name of the Lord and we need to be dedicated unto him amen so that he can walk into this place and everything is going to change can somebody say amen amen let's pray Jesus God Almighty we give you the honor and the glory and we thank you Lord for allowing us to be here this evening we ask your blessing to continue to be a reside upon each and every one of us that are here this evening and those that aren't here those that are back home amen on, amen watching us on hallelujah on facebook or whatever it might be youtube almighty god but edify them with your word like you are edifying us here in your presence almighty god help us almighty god to apply what we're about to hear help us to be hearers and doers of your word hallelujah not just hearers only otherwise we're just fooling our own self God Almighty, that when you return, you will find us faithful and fruitful. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you for standing so long. Amen. Yo creo que te están, están alabando al Señor también aquí alrededor de nosotros. They're, men, they're, they're worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's how I'm going to take it. Amen. That they're giving God glory. Amen. With those cuetes that they have there. Amen. Blowing off their fireworks or whatever it might be. Amen. No más que no me la cabeza porque praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to entitle this message here tonight, Dedication. Dedication. Meaning to set apart for a special use. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. That is what's lacking today in the hour in which we're living. Dedication. Hello, somebody. Amen. amen. And I'm going to ask you a question just straight out. Are you dedicated to him? I'm not talking about coming to church on Sundays. I'm not talking about coming here and being here this afternoon or this evening. I'm talking about are you dedicated to him? I don't know the answer to that. The only one that knows is you, you and God. You're the one that knows if you're dedicated to him. Praise the name of the Lord because that's what we need in the hour in which we're living. Amen. Otherwise, we're just, hallelujah, doing the right thing. A lot of people come to church because they know it's the right thing. All right, I need to be here because there's nice people at church. Amen. And they're good people. And, and I need to be there because I need to be the same way. Praise the name of the Lord. But it's, it's a lot more than that. Can somebody say amen? amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to be dedicated to God. Hallelujah. We, we have to have that determination that we're going to live for God all the rest of the days of our lives. Can somebody say amen? amen? Praise the name of the Lord because, amen, otherwise we're just... 
amen we're not going to make it amen and you don't want to fake it till you make it you got to you got to stick you got to be genuine you got to be for real can somebody say amen in the scriptures that we have read amen we read amen this was a commemoration they were commemorating Amen. The, the cleansing and the reopening of the temple after it had been desecrated. Amen. By the Syrian ruler Antiochus Epiphanes. Amen. Who had desecrated. Amen. And basically. Amen. Defiled the temple of God. And so they were reopening the temple. Amen. And they were, this was a commemoration. And this is what was happening at this moment. It was at Jerusalem. The feast of the dedication. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Can somebody say Amen. What a blessing it is when Jesus Christ walks into your life. What a blessing it is and what a change takes place when Jesus Christ walks into your life. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. God, Amen. When he walks into your life, everything changes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Everything changes. Amen. The atmosphere changes. Your life changes. Amen. Your clothes change. Amen. What you do changes. Amen. How you think changes. Amen. Where you go. How you act. Hallelujah. How you react. Everything changes when Jesus walks into your life. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Wisdom. During this time as we're reading here. Hallelujah. During this dedication. Hallelujah. Amen. Of Jesus and him walking into Solomon's porch. This was a commemoration after the cleansing and the reopening of the temple after desecration by the Syrian ruler Antiochus Epiphanes. You see, at this time, wisdom, amen, hallelujah, King Solomon was reigning and ruling at this time. Wisdom, they had plenty of it. King Solomon, hallelujah, because he was the king and he, because of the great wisdom that he had possessed because he had asked God for the right thing. God told him, what do you, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. He told him, I want wisdom. So I can, I mean, I can rule and I can reign over your people with wisdom. And because of that, God said, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, I'm going to give you riches. I'm going to give you everything that you need, everything you want. It's going to be yours because you asked for the right thing. So, amen, King Solomon, wisdom and their, their kingdom at that time was blessed with great wisdom. Amen. And Israel with, was, had peace all the way around them with all of their neighbors. Everybody was at peace, amen, with, uh, with Israel because of the reign of King Solomon and his wisdom. Can somebody say amen? Temple, the temple dedication. King Solomon had the temple of the Lord built. And when he had, it was finished, all Israel came to worship. Amen. God, for seven days they came to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Not seven minutes, not seven hours. Seven days they came to worship and dedicate the temple unto the Lord God Almighty. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. When it was finished, all Israel came to worship God for seven days. And they offered up in sacrifice 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. And you might ask yourself, why so many animals? And answer them and that would say, tell you is that worship. When you worship, you declare the worth of of the object of your love or how much you love whatever it is amen that you're worshiping and the only way they had to show god how much they loved him hallelujah was to offer a blood sacrifice they said if 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 one is good how about 100 and if 100 is better then let's offer the lord 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep can somebody say amen listen when you come to church don't give him leftovers. Don't give him. Let me tell you, when I, when I worship the Lord, whether it's in Spanish or English, I look and I gaze out at God's people. And I see, some, I see the majority of the people worshiping God. And they're in tune with me as, as we're worshiping and praising the name of the Lord. But there's some that are oblivious. They're oblivious, amen, to the presence of God. They're oblivious, amen, hallelujah, to the importance of praising and worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah, parece que están esperando el bus. Hallelujah, están ahí nomás yendo para arriba, looking around, hallelujah, and all that kind of... Let me tell you something, brother and sister. When you worship and you praise God, hallelujah, you focus your attention on who it is you're worshiping, and you give Him, <clears throat> you give him your best. Can somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll, I'll call people sometime. Hey, where you been? Oh, I, I, I've been sick. Amen. But did you go to work? Oh, yeah, I was at work, but I don't go to church. Amen. I just go to work. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God is worthy of all the praise, the worship, the honor, the glory now and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. You're right. Adoration. So if praise and adoration. So if a little bit of praise is good, 
then let's give him a lot of praise. Cause won't you agree? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to just give him a little bit. I don't want to give him my leftover. Toma, ay, te sobro. Hallelujah. There, there's my leftovers. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want to give God my, my first fruits. I want to give him my best. I don't want to give him my leftovers. I want to give him my best. Don't give the world your best. Don't give your job your best. Don't give somebody else your best. Give God your best. <coughs> Can somebody say amen? amen? Hallelujah. And the Bible says that they worship and praise the Lord. Fire fell from heaven and consumed all those animals that they had sacrificed. Hallelujah. The Bible says that fire fell from heaven and consumed their sacrifices and their offerings. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's what I look. Look, at. I don't want to worship the Lord. Y no pasa nada. Nothing happens. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't feel nothing. He don't, he don't hear me. It, it's not what I'm singing isn't a sweet smelling savor. As, as the Bible says, when we worship and praise the Lord, hallelujah, it is as a sweet smelling savor that ascends before the nostrils of God. And he smells it and he is pleased. I want him to be pleased with my praise and my worship. Hallelujah. I want to please, please the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says that fire fell from heaven and consumed their sacrifices and their offerings. I don't want to live my life. You don't want to live your life, amen, hallelujah, and not have what you've done for God to be acceptable in His sight. You don't want your sacrifices, hallelujah, to be rejected as Cain's was, amen, hallelujah. You want to be like Abel where you, you please the Lord and you offer Him your sacrifice and He accepts what you are brought to Him to offer to Him. Can somebody say amen? Listen, if you dedicate your temple to God, Jesus will walk in and will abide in your temple. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Bible tells us, amen, that Solomon's life was out of balance. Can somebody say amen? amen. Solomon's life was out of balance. Amen. Hallelujah. His life was out of balance. But the Bible, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He was given warnings by God. Amen. God knew that King Solomon wasn't right. So God told him to be careful for three things. Hallelujah. And let us read in 2 Chronicles 7, 17, 18, 19, and 20. The word of the Lord reads as follows. And as for thee, talking to Solomon, if you will walk before me as David your father did, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and you observe my statutes and my judgments, Verse 18, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. Amen. Verse 19, but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Verse 20, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given to them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, hallelujah, will I cast out of my sight. And I will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. What a warning, amen, the Lord gave to King Solomon. In all of your wisdom and all of your hallelujah, splendor, King Solomon, hallelujah, amen, your life was out of balance. His life was out of balance. No matter how wonderful he was, no matter how much of a, he had peace, amen, in Israel, enjoyed peace, hallelujah, around about. Don't be afraid, amen. Just worship the Lord. It's going to be all right. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Israel had peace all the way around them in their borders, amen, all their neighbors. I mean, you know that Israel was always fighting with the tribes around them, but during the, the rule and the reign of Solomon, amen, they enjoyed peace and prosperity, and splendors, and money, and all kinds of good things. Hallelujah. They had even the queen of Sheba came to, let me see what Solomon's all about. Can somebody say amen? But nonetheless, it happens even to the best of us. People's lives get out of balance. They start to get imbalanced. Can somebody say amen? Por el descuido. Or, hallelujah, neglecting their salvation or, or not focusing on their relationship with God. 
Can somebody say amen? And because of that, hallelujah, they start to struggle. Amen. Just like Solomon started to struggle. Hallelujah. And the Lord warned him and he told him, don't take foreign wives for they have foreign gods. Control, he told him, number two, control your love for the things that you like. And don't heap up gold and silver for pleasure. You see, God wanted Solomon in all of his splendor and all of his wisdom and all that stuff. Hallelujah. He wanted Solomon to walk uprightly. He wanted him to be a righteous king. God didn't care for Solomon to build him a temple. But he wanted Solomon to build a holy life. To be a good example to the rest of the kingdom. Can somebody say amen? But he was not that. He wasn't a good example to the rest of the kingdom. Even though he had a lot of wisdom. And you know the time when he took the, the two women that had two children. And one of them fell asleep on her child. And so it died. And so they, they were both fighting over the one, the one child. And they brought him to Solomon. And he just said, okay, whose is it? Oh, it's mine. No, it's mine. They were both saying that it was theirs. He told me, okay, traeme una espada. Bring me a sword. Let's see. Hallelujah. I'll just chop the baby in two. That way you get half and you get the other half. And the one lady, they meant that the mother, that it really was her child. Amen. She said, no, 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 let her have it. The other one said, yeah, yeah, give it to me. And he right away knew. He was a smart man. He was wise because God had given him that wisdom. But at the same time, he wasn't wise enough. Hallelujah. He wasn't. His life was out of balance. Anybody's life can get out of balance. You start to go after the things that you shouldn't go after. And you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. If you're an apostolic, you know the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't go after the things that you're not supposed to go after. And that's what Solomon did. God wanted him to walk uprightly. God didn't care for Solomon to build him a temple, but for Solomon to build a holy life because he knew he was going to be an example to the entire kingdom. Can somebody say amen? And that's the way we are too. Amen. We're an example. We're either a good example or we're not a good example. Simple as that. God wants you, hallelujah, to build a holy life. He don't care about building a house and building a career and building, having all kinds of money. Because all that's going to disappear one day. Can somebody say amen? amen? Hallelujah. All things are going to pass away. But my word is never going to pass away. The word of God never going to pass away. This is what's going to ring out through eternity is what God says. Can somebody say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And we see three valuable lessons here in the life of Solomon. And that is this. We are all known to God. God knows you. God knows us where we're at with him and where we're not at. Hallelujah. For those that aren't, amen, a good example like you're supposed to be. We are known to God. Can somebody say amen? We are what we love. Amen. What do you love? Do you love God? Do you love the word of God? It'll be obvious. It'll be apparent. It'll be evident in your life that you love God. Because it's obvious that you're in love with God. Can somebody say amen? We are known to God. God knows who we are. Praise the Lord. And we are what we love. Hello, somebody. Number three, and we influence others by our lifestyles, our values, and our actions. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. I want to influence people, amen, in, in, in a positive way. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to influence people, hallelujah, to love God. I want to influence people to serve God. I want people, hallelujah, to be encouraged, hallelujah, by my example, that we are to live according to the word of God, not according to the world, not according to my feeling, not according to, hallelujah, what she says or he says, but what God says. You want to measure your life by something? Measure your life according to the word of God, not according to other people. Well, she's jumping off a cliff. Can I do it? Sure you can, pero estás loca. Amen. You don't go jumping off a cliff just because somebody else is doing it. You don't go following somebody else's example. Because when you measure yourself by other people, hallelujah, you're following into the same problems that they have. Can somebody say amen? You want to you wanna measure yourself? Measure yourself according to the word of God. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says, amen. Solomon had a thousand wives. Hijo. My goodness. Oh, man, you're crazy, brother. He had a thousand wives and concubines. In other words, wives and concubines, just playthings. The Bible says he had 4,000 horses. Le gustaba caballos. He liked horses. Amen. Giddy up and all that. 
He had silver and gold to play with. Listen, I'm going to bring up a fact. I want you to know this. When he built the temple of God, it took him seven years. When he built his own house, it took him 13 years. What, do you, what kind of an example is that? Amen. Something wasn't right. Can you say amen? And he built a beautiful temple. Nobody has ever built a temple like, the, like Solomon's temple. You, they say nobody has ever built a temple like the one that Solomon built. But he only took seven years to build it. But his own pad, 13 years. Solomon's life was out of balance, brother and sister. His life was out of balance. Amen. He built one altar to the Almighty God. One altar. And he built 1,000 altars. Amen. Hallelujah for other gods. Because of the concubines and the wives that he had. Imagine that. He did exactly what the Lord told him not to do. And that's what he did. I guess he thought he was smarter than God. Nobody's smarter than God, my friend. Hallelujah. What shall it profit a man? You gain the whole world or have every baby doll in the whole world. And you lose your own soul in the end. Can somebody say amen? That's not going to do you no good. Give the Lord a hand praise if you know what I'm talking about. God wants us to store up our treasures in heaven, not on earth. Not in your career. Not in your home. Not in the things that you possess. Hallelujah. Not in the temporary things, but on the eternal things. Can somebody say amen? The things that are not seen. Amen. Store up your treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt nor thieves can break in and steal. Can somebody say amen? Because you know that stuff's going to end up getting broken into and taken away from you anyway. You know that, right? No, never mind. I don't, that's another message. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't look on the temporal. Don't look on the stuff that's the material, the things that are just temporary. Look on the things that are eternal, my friend. Hallelujah. Don't look at the things that are temporary, the job, the house, the car, the bills, the clothes, the problem. Look to the eternal. Don't look at what you do. Listen, stop looking at what you don't have. Too many people se la pasa todo el tiempo looking at what they don't have. Stop looking at what you don't have, brother. And start to look at what you do have. Start to look at what you do have. What do I got? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. When I was in Lifeline, amen, I didn't have a house on the hill. I didn't even have a car in the driveway. I didn't have no money in my pocket. But I had salvation in Jesus Christ's name. I was storing up my treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt and steal. I had a brother come up to me, try to make me feel bad. Hallelujah. In the end, I made him feel bad because I told him, you shouldn't even be telling me that, brother. Hallelujah. Because, it, amen, I've been storing up my treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt nor thieves can break in and steal. Hallelujah. My labor is, is never in vain, my friend. So even though I don't have a car on the, hallelujah, in the driveway or a house on the hill or any other such thing, Hallelujah, my treasures are great in heaven, which I have. So you don't, even if you don't see them, I still have them. Can somebody say amen? Even if you don't see them, we still have them. I remember I used to feel bad when they were past the offering baskets. I was in Lifeline, I didn't have no money in my pocket. I couldn't give. But I say, one of these days, I'm going to be able to give. And I'm going to give generously because God has been good to me. Can somebody say amen? You know what? You know what? If he didn't do anything else for me, he brought me out of darkness, brother and sister. Hey, I'm, I'm, seri I'm serious as I could ever be. Amen. He changed my life from a tramp into a child of God. He changed my life from somebody that knew nothing, amen, into somebody that knows everything in Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. And because of that, I, I owe him my life. I, I serve the Lord with everything I got, and I encourage you to do the same thing. I encourage you to do the same thing. Amen. Be dedicated to God. I said dedicate yourself to God. Dedicate yourself to God because serving the Lord is going to be a lot easier. If you dedicate yourself to God, it's going to be easy. If you're trying to serve two masters, you're going to hate yourself. You're going to hate your life. It's going to be miserable. It's going to be hard. You don't want to do that. Serve the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. Amen. Trust the Lord with all of your heart. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the name of the Lord. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? God wants us to remember where he has brought us from. Can somebody say amen? amen. I, I take a walk down memory lane every day. Amen. Hello, somebody. 
and not to glory in all the trash that I was involved in, but to remember the miserable life that I had before I came to God. I praise the name of the Lord, somebody. Listen, my best day in the world, uh, my, my worst day in the Lord is always better even than my best day than when I was in the world. Can somebody say amen? amen. Remember the ten lepers. Hallelujah. God healed them all of leprosy. Amen. But only one came back to glorify God. Hallelujah. Which one are you? The nine or the one? I don't know that answer, but you do. Praise the name of the Lord. If we're truly thankful unto him, we'll be dedicated to the Lord. Can somebody say amen? amen. Listen, a spoiled person feels that they don't need anything. You, you ever known somebody that's spoiled? They don't, they don't feel like they need anything because, amen, they have it all. Or they feel they have it all. King Solomon, he entertained the queen of Sheba at the cost of his soul. Now let's talk about King Solomon's dad. Let's talk about his daddy pops. Amen. King David. Amen. During his rule and his reign, nothing was perfect. The Bible says that God didn't even want him to build the temple of, of the Lord because he had killed too many people. He had shed too much blood. But during the rule of, of King David, God's men, Israel was taught to respect the priests of the Most High God. This is what they would say in 1 Chronicles 16 and 22. Amen. Saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Amen. You don't talk bad about the man of God. You don't talk bad about the preachers, the pastor, or those that are serving the Lord or the anointing of God. Can somebody say amen? King David, he knew this, and he told, amen, hallelujah. He taught his people, the people at that time, saying, touch not mine anointed, don't touch them, and do my prophets no harm. Praise the name of the Lord. They were taught to love the word of God. Can somebody say amen? They were taught to love the word of God and those that would preach the word. The children's books they read weren't the prayer. Hey, hallelujah. They were the prayers of the king. They weren't see, spot, run. Amen. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy 6, 4. They, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Can somebody say amen? That's what they were taught. That's what the children's books were. They weren't see, spot, rung, amen, and, 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 and amen, green eggs and ham or anything like that. It was, hallelujah, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Can somebody say amen? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength and everything you got. Love him with everything you got because there's only one God. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Hallelujah. And you need to love that God. His name is Jesus Christ with everything you got. Can somebody say amen? Who was, that king, who was King David's best friend? Who frequented his home? It wasn't the queen of Sheba. It was Nathan the prophet. It was the preacher. It was the man of God. Amen. David knew who he needed to have in his life or who he needed to have close to him. He wasn't trying to entertain the world. He wasn't trying to be like the world. He wasn't trying to be, hallelujah, or have a friend, amen, with somebody from the world. He wanted the man of God to be his friend. He wanted the prophet to be his friend. Nathan the prophet, it was the preacher, it was the man of God. You see, King David sinned with Bathsheba. But listen to his prayer as we read in Psalms 51, beginning at verse 9. This is what he said and what he, amen, prayed unto the Lord his God. After he had committed sin with Bathsheba and had her husband kill Uriah the Hittite. Amen. He tells the Lord, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit, a right attitude in my mind, my heart. Cast me not away from your presence. Don't throw me to the curb. And don't take the Holy Ghost from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. There are people, amen, in the church today, they don't have the joy of the Lord in their life no more. Son, I see. Everybody's worshiping and the brothers up here throwing flips and everybody's flying all over the place. Yesos frozen amen because the joy of the lord is no longer their strength in their life but you need to just pray restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit but look at what is what he ends up saying this is what moves me this is what just amen is so awesome psalms 51 13 he says then 
will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. He wasn't just thinking of himself. He wasn't just thinking, amen, forgive me, forgive me, give me, give me, give me. He wasn't just thinking about give me, give me, forgive me, help me, please help me, give me strength, give me this, give me money, give me a car, give me a helicopter, give me all this stuff. He wasn't asking for all that nonsense. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. God, I want you to forgive me of my sins. Absolutely. So that way I can teach transgressors your way so there'll be other people that don't know you. So they can come to know you. And sinners can be converted unto thee. He knew what God loved. He knew that God loved people. Because God loves people. Can somebody say amen? And God uses us, amen, to let other people know that we, that, hallelujah, we serve a great big God. And that great big God loves you. He died for you on the cross at Calvary. And he's coming back for those, hallelujah, that dedicate their lives to him and give him, hallelujah, a chance to live in their hearts and live in their, their, their temple. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. He asked for the right thing. He didn't just ask for give me, give me, give me. He says, because I want to give. I want to teach transgressors thy ways, and I want sinners to be converted unto thee because he knew that that was the heartbeat of God. Can somebody say amen? The Bible tells us that he made one of the greatest mistakes a person could ever make, yet it was his response to what he had done. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. It was his response that, that is such a wonderful example to us. And as we read contrast and just take the, the example that we have in Solomon and his dad, King David. Solomon was busy with music. He was cultured. He was refined. Amen. He had harps and soft music. But King David said, sit down, boys. I got to dance. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, you know what? Sit down. Let's, let's jam. We're going we're gonna to dance here. David was doing the singing. Listen, he says in Psalms 23 and 1, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Where is the king? Where's King David? He's at the house of the Lord. Amen. What is he doing? Psalms 27 and 4 says this, One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I might, do seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Can somebody say amen? He wanted to do the right thing. He wanted to dwell in the presence of God. He wanted to be in the house of the Lord because he knew that that's what God wanted him to do. Can somebody say amen? He wanted to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David didn't have a pretty church. Solomon had the best temple in the world. Hallelujah. But David didn't have a pretty church, but he wanted to be there all the time. That's what the scripture told us, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and now I'm, I'm going to seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I might be in the temple of God. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I try to spend as much time as I can, amen, in the house of God, because I like to be in his presence. Can somebody say amen? The Bible tells us, amen, he wanted to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David didn't have a pretty church, but he wanted to be there all the time. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Solomon had the most beautiful temple but no time to worship God. Amen. We have two examples here. Hallelujah. We have two examples here. A wise man that lost out with God or a man that fell into terrible sin. Hallelujah. And the forgiveness, the great forgiveness that God had upon his life. Can somebody say amen? What an example we have. Two different contrasts here. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Solomon had the most beautiful temple, but he didn't have no time to worship God. And King David, he just said, you know what? I don't care about nothing. I don't care even what my wife says. Hallelujah. I'm going to worship the Lord. Amen. And, and, and his wife over there despising him in her heart because, amen, what are you doing? You're the king. You're not supposed to be dancing in front of everybody. He says, I don't care. Hallelujah. I'm not doing it for you. I'm not doing it for nobody. I'm doing it for him. Can somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. You do it for the, what, what we do, we do for the Lord. Hallelujah. We do to please the Lord. Whether you're a woman, a man, a child, a, hallelujah, it doesn't matter who you are. You do whatever you do, you do it for the Lord. 
Don't ever forget that. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Musicians, please. Hallelujah. Amen. King Solomon dedicated a temple. He had a house built for God, but nobody forgets his sin. Amen. I can't stop thinking about all them thousand wives, brother. You got to be crazy, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. I I'm blessed with one. I don't need a thousand. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. All we need is one. Hello, somebody. Give the Lord a hand praise. If you know what I'm talking about. And they're a blessing if you take care of them. They'll be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. All the days of your life. Take care of them. Cuídala bien. Trátala bien. Amen. Be the man of God that you're supposed to be. Hallelujah. And they'll take care of you all the days of their life. Can somebody say amen? Pero si lo maltratas, if you treat her bad, hallelujah, what do you expect you're going to get? Can somebody say amen? King Solomon dedicated a beautiful temple. He built one of the most magnificent temples ever built, but nobody forgets his sin. But King David, on the other hand, he rededicated himself. He didn't dedicate a temple. He rededicated himself. Because I'm talking about being dedicated to God now. David fell into terrible sin, but nobody forgets the forgiveness of God that God had upon his life. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Nobody, hallelujah, King Solomon, everybody, you can't forget, amen. Uh, you know, he was a wise man, but he couldn't have been that wise. He lost out with God. That's what I believe. Amen, because he didn't, he didn't use his wisdom properly. He even messed with wine just to see. Oh, se mira bonito. Let's see how it is. Oops, that's not good. But you don't experiment with sin. <laughs> you don't experiment with sin to see how it, how it affects you. You've got no business doing that. Can somebody say amen? You don't take substances. You don't do any of that kind of stuff. Amen. King, King Solomon became self-gratified. He became complacent with what he had and who he was and all that kind of stuff. Amen. Even the, even the warnings that God had given to him, he pushed them to the side. Don't push the warnings that God gives you to the side. Because one day they're going to come up front and real. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord on that day when we all shall stand before the presence of God. King David was after God's own heart, brothers and sisters. Therefore, he rededicated his life to the Lord. There is a need here tonight, amen, to do some dedicating. For those that have never dedicated your life to the Lord, you need to dedicate your life to the Lord. You know that, right? Amen. What are you waiting for? Amen. Tomorrow's not promised to you. Amen. You need to today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation day that I need to give my life to the Lord. I wasted enough time. Let me tell you, I wasted 26 years of my life. Amen. Wandering aimlessly in the streets of this world until I gave my life to the Lord in September 29th of 1983. I was baptized in Jesus name. Been baptized for 37 years now. Loving the Lord and enjoying every moment of it. Thank God Almighty. I'm, I'm free at last. I'm free at last. Thank God Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm free at last. Hallelujah. King David, after God's own heart, therefore he rededicated his life to the Lord. There is a need here today, tonight, to do some dedicating for those that have never given their life to the Lord. Don't wait till tomorrow, because it's not promised for you or me. Dedicate your life to the Lord tonight. And for those that have already been serving the Lord, amen, there's room for improvement. Don't you agree? Hay lugar para mejorar, no? There's room for improvement. Praise the name of the Lord in our lives tonight. Hallelujah. And for those of us that know God, we, we sometimes we feel like, oh, man, you know, what are we preaching that for? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Nobody's that good, brother and sister. Nobody's that good. Hallelujah. We need God. Amen. You want to get good? Get God. Rededicate yourself back to Him because that's what He's waiting for. Can somebody say amen? 
Right there where you're at, close your eyes and lift up your hands and just worship the Lord. God Almighty, as our praise team, amen, begins to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. And take us in and usher us into the presence of the Lord as we talk to God. And let's pray. Talk to God and tell him, God Almighty. God Almighty, I need to rededicate myself to you. Give myself away. I need to rededicate so myself you to you. Can I need you. Use me. I give myself away. I give myself away, God Almighty, because I need you. I need to rededicate myself to you. I give myself away. And for my brothers and my sisters that have not given so their lives to you yet, I pray for them in Jesus Christ's name. Me. Lift up your hands where you're at. If you want a minister to pray for you, hallelujah. Ministers, I need your help. Hallelujah. For those, amen, that have their hands raised, pray for them. Hallelujah. Once they pray for you and lay hands on you, put your hands down so that way we know we are not going to have to pray for you again. Let's pray. God Almighty, help me to dedicate my life to you for those that have not given their lives to Jesus yet. And for the rest of us, rededicate your life. To the one and only and Jesus Christ, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I give myself away, God Almighty, oh, to you. I give myself I give myself, I give myself away, away, God Almighty, to you. So you, so you can use me. Can use I don't oh, want to just give, sit down. Give myself away. I don't want to remain idle. I want to multiply my talents, my gifts. And my abilities away, in the kingdom of God. So I want to contribute into the kingdom of God. I want to be like here King I David. Am. I don't want to be like Solomon. I want to be like King David. I, I want to ask you to forgive me. Hallelujah. Restore me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, Almighty God. Create in me a clean heart. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence. Your desires, God Almighty, have your way in our lives. God Almighty, so that we can be give myself by and sinners can be converted unto thee. God Almighty, this is your heartbeat. This is your desire for your church. I give myself. You want to use us. So we give ourselves away. God Almighty. As we rededicate ourselves to thee. Oh, I give we myself. For those that have not given their life to you yet. Everything I, I have, I give. give. Their life to you now. I give myself. Almighty God, and receive Bible study. And give their life to you, Jesus. Sing, I give myself. And baptize in Jesus Christ's name for the remission of their sins. You can have God it all. Almighty, hallelujah. I give myself. My heart, take my life, take my life as a living, as a living sacrifice. In all my dreams, all my plans, but we can be certain of this. Lord, I place them. It's towards your word. It is to your word. We give ourselves away to the Almighty. Yes, Lord, I give myself. I give myself away. We give ourselves away to you. So you can use us. I give myself. Have your way in our lives, Almighty God. Our family, our children, our grandchildren, our loved ones, our extended families. This isn't just about me. But it's about our families and our loved ones, God Almighty, that need to be saved. Save all of us. Help us, Lord, God Almighty, to serve you on the days of our lives. My life is not my own. I belong to you. I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. I give myself, I give myself to you. Sing, 
my life is not my own. God Almighty, we want to serve you all the days of our life till the day we see you face to face. Hallelujah, spend eternity in your presence, Almighty God. This is my prayer for everybody here today. My life is not my own. In Jesus Christ's name.
Hallelujah. All together. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. All Thank you, Jesus. Together. Have your way in our lives, Almighty God. Give the Lord a hand, praise tonight, church. God bless you. Don't forget the announcements that were made earlier here tonight. Amen. Don't forget on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays, amen, we have Bible studies. Hallelujah. In English and Spanish. At 6.30, it's in Spanish. 7.30, it's in English. Amen. We don't want to be recording and putting things online and everything for your benefit. And we don't even take advantage of it. On Friday nights also at 7.30, amen, the, the preachers of the word of the Lord are there for the ministers of the church. Amen. For your edification, to bless your lives. Amen. If you're a part of a, of a Bible study with the ladies, Bible study group, participate in that group and edify yourselves by studying the Word of God and edifying each other and, 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 and helping each other and, and being a blessing, amen, to each other. Can somebody say amen? Don't forget our, our, our little box over here in the middle of the, amen, the tabernacle over here. Praise the name of the Lord to deposit your, pay your tithes and, and give your offerings, amen, unto the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to be starting up men's Bible study groups. Men's Bible study groups. If you're an hombre, amen, you're going to be included. Can somebody say amen? So that way you can keep each other connected, stay connected, and each, amen, and study the Word of God together for your own blessing. Can somebody say amen? Our visitor friends, God bless you. You are honored guest here at Family Life Center. We're glad you are with us here this evening in the house of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. And we're going to be dismissed at this time. I don't know if I'm forgetting any of the announcements, but don't forget the announcement that we made earlier. Let's stand tonight, church. Oh, by the way, yesterday we had our Florida suit service. Amen. And we were, uh, we celebrated right here. Amen. And we, uh, amen, we turned in $8,000, amen, to the Florida suit for the, the mission field. Praise the name of the Lord to uh, be a blessing to the mission, the missionaries in the mission field. Amen. We picked it up at the last minute and we came up with $8,000 and we gave it to them yesterday and to God be the glory. I just want to say I want to thank God for our, our, our team, our team that, that helps us here. Brother Robert de la Cruz, Lifeline Ministries, Danny Camonte, all the praise team, the musicians, amen, the singers, Lifeline, like I said, what a blessing they are. To, hey, this is a lot of work, brother and sister. All this stuff, we take it for granted. You know what they were saying yesterday? Wow. Everybody from the other churches, amen, they were just like, wow, you know, because they didn't, it's nice here, but we take it for granted. We, we Oh, we have this all the time, yeah, but they don't, and they really were impressed. So I'm just telling you the truth, amen. Uh, God bless our, our sector. God bless our district. Amen. And God bless each and every one of you. And God bless our, our team, our helpers. Man, they're they're awesome. Amen. Let's let's bow our heads in a word of prayer as we dismiss. Jesus, God Almighty, we give you the honor and the glory, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your perfect will to be done in our lives. Thank you for your word that we have received here tonight. Thank you that we're able to be here in your presence, of standing on holy ground, worshiping and praising the name that is above every other name. God Almighty, but we ask you, Lord, help us to apply what we have heard. Help us to be dedicated to you, God, and not, and not to anything else. First and foremost, our priority needs to be in being dedicated to you. Almighty God, as we rapidly approach the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, help us to be, make ourselves ready and prepared. Almighty God, that when you come, you will find us faithful and fruitful. And we pray, have your way in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.